right? Um, so we, we looked at uh, how we go about committing uh, changes to uh, a local repository yesterday. Um, we also briefly touched on how you go about pushing, right? Um, committing is a, is a trivial process, right? The assumption you're making before you commit, prior to committing, is that you would have added. So you need to first of all add the files that have been changed or added to the repository. So you have to add them to the index. You have to stage them. After you do that, you, you can commit the changes. Uh, committing the changes is uh, as easy as just issuing the command git commit. Then you press enter. In its vanilla form, what happens is the editor that you specified as part of the configuration process. Yeah, if you remember, we we had uh, we had we had mentioned that some of the common configuration details you'd have to uh, to perform would involve you specifying the editor, right? So you do git config call dot editor, right? And then you specify the name of the editor. In my case, uh, my edit of choice is, uh, has always been Vim, right? So if I do a git config and I list, right? The current configuration details, what you'll notice is that the core edit I have here is VI. If I had, let's say, a weird editor like uh, Nano, for instance, which most people use, oof, I hate this thing. Um, what, I, what you could do is you could say git config, right? Core dot editor, and then you'd say nano here, right? And what is this core dot editor? Nano something. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so because I'm running this, um, so I'm running this, Git, Git assumes that uh, if I run it without uh, the global flag, then I would want to associate the configuration details to an individual repository. But if I want to make this a global configuration, right? Then I would say core dot editor, and then I would say nano here. And then once I check the configuration, if I list it, VI will be replaced by nano, right? And indeed, when I do go, to one of the repositories that has already been created. And if you remember here, um, and if I attempt to, to add something, to make a change and then edit, um, what, will not, what will happen here is I'll go to example project. Let's see if, uh, horrible example here. <clears throat> I'll go to, uh, Maybe cool program will be best. Or I think I have my cool app here. Beautiful. So if I go to my cool app and then I, because there are no, there are no changes that, oh, there's a change there. What I can do is I can do an add, right? A recursive add, so I add everything. I check the status and you notice that this will, will change. The status of this will change from untracked to staged, right? Yeah. You notice now that uh, it's been staged, uh, ready to be committed. Once I do a git commit, nano will be opened now, not vi, right? So I'll make my change here. Um, I'm not very conversant with, uh, with nano myself, so I will change my core editor back to vi, right? Or vim, as it's commonly called, vi, vim, right? Um, so that when I issue a git commit, uh, VI will be opened and then I can, I can, I can just uh, add a commit message and just say added uh, users.html. Added a new file. And as part of an additional comment, I'd say added, uh, added the file HTML forward slash users.html, right? And then I would save this. Um, and then uh, one of the very last things we mentioned yesterday was this notion of of, um, <clears throat> of pushing changes, right? So you push changes by issuing a git push command. Um, and what happens with the git push command is there's certain important um, 
input parameters that you have to specify. Um, so git push, you have to specify the, the remote repository name, right? Uh, followed by optionally the branch where you are pushing to. Right? So in this case, um, if let's say we wanted, we've defined the remote repository as Bitbucket, for instance, we wanted to push the changes to Bitbucket, we'd issue a git push followed by the name. If we've named it Bitbucket, we'd specify Bitbucket, right? And then this, the changes would be pushed. But observe, if I issue the command git remote, right, verbose, with the devil's output here. I will, the, the git remote command will spit out or without verbal test. It will list all the remote names. Currently, I have one remote name called GitHub. Right? If I issue a git remote verbose mode, I will be able to see the URL related to this remote repository that I've linked to my to my, to my project. So in essence, what this is showing us is that perhaps uh, things would be a lot easier if I just copy them across to uh, a more visually appealing um, application. What this is telling us here, right, is that my repository is integrated, right, or synchronizes information um, or versions with a remote repository the central remote repository that is hosted on GitHub. And clearly this remote repository here, because I'm using the HTTPS protocol, which hopefully you discuss at length in 2021, I believe, right? You know, what's the difference between HTTPS and HTTP? What are the differences between these different protocols like uh, SSH? Just hoping you discuss these things, very important things here, right? Um, so I see here that I'm using the HTTPS protocol and I, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually putting information from information from a repository defined by the user light on period, right? And so this user light on period created this repository. And the, the idea here is simple, right? The reason why you have two, two separate outputs here, right? Line number two and three is because you typically have a, um, you have a remote repository being associated with with a push and a pull request, right? So which is why we have fetch here for pulling and push, pushing. Um, so anyways, the idea here is uh, Lighton would then be able to, so if Lighton is collab collaborating with other people, what Lighton would do is either send this remote repository, right? To, to people that is collaborating with, to say, uh, you know, uh, this is the repository we will be using to collaboratively write code, right? Uh, and then, and then the other people just uh, get this repository, right? And then clone the repository. When you clone the repository, yeah. Let's say I wanted to clone this in in this folder, for instance. And in this folder, what I would do is I would say git clone, right? My core. So I'll clone this repository. Oh my God, I hope this won't expect me to enter. I think it, it will. This is the thing here. I have to. Uh, I have to get. Uh, I have to get. Uh, I have to copy the uh, the key because uh, Git GitHub has phased out uh, the use of uh, GitHub has phased out the use of um, what do you call this um, uh, username password pair. So uh, as of I think August twenty seventh or something, if the memory serves me right, um, what you have to do now is you'd have to uh, you have to use authentication tokens, right? So I'll just get the token that I created. It's a temporal token. Um, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stop sharing, right? So that uh, you guys don't get to see my token or something. 
not that it matters, but I think I, th I think some of the some of the things can be seen here. So I'm just going to uh, personal tokens. I just want to copy the token associated with uh, with. Uh, With, with that, with, with, with this particular course. Just bear with me. Uh, GitHub has uh, made a number of changes this recent months or something. I'm not sure why this is the case, here, but there we go. I guess I can regenerate the token or something. Yeah, this is a problem, right? And I'll set it to expire just after seven days or something. Or well, 30 days is fine. I guess, not that it matters. But anyways, uh, I've just uh, shared my screen again. Uh, here's to hoping you can see my screen. So. What I would, what I was, what I'm trying to showcase here is um, a very simple process where um, we we are simulating a situation where Lighton has a repository, right? So Lighton has this repository, right? A repository that has uh, just a few commits now, I guess. I mean, um, a total of about twenty. Ooh, is this twenty-seven? No, I have to grab for commit. A total of five commits, right? Um, so out of these five commits, uh, Lighton now wants to share this repository with uh, other people, which is why I shared that link. And let's say one of you uh, clones the repository. You'd clone it by getting the link that Lighton has shared, right? You copy paste, you just say git clone, the URL, and then you press uh, enter, right? Uh, by default, the same name of the repository will be used. So you enter your name, and then um, and then you enter the your credentials, which is your token, your access token. Right? Press enter, and then the cloning will start. Right? It doesn't take time because this is a, a very small repository. If you look at my cool app, uh, if you look at the size of my cool app here. It's just 304 kilobytes, right? Uh, and so you see here that the cloned repository has all the changes that Lighton has made. Now, the, the thing I wanted to show here is when you clone a repository for the first time, the, the remote server is automatically added for you. So if you do a git remote dash v, you'll be able to see that the, the URL you used to clone this repository is going to be automatically given the name origin, right? And then to be associated with the URL that you used, right? You can change the name if you wish. I do this a lot myself. So if I'm synchronizing content to Bitbucket and GitHub, instead of maintaining these default names like origin, what I prefer to do is I would rename. So I'll do a git remote, right? Um, rename, and then I'll specify origin to GitHub or something. And then if I check this remote verbosely, I'll be able to see that uh, origin has been renamed to GitHub, right? Um, Anyway, very useful in some instances, right? Uh, very, very useful, actually. Um, anyways, so so the, the pushing part now, right? The pushing part is quite trivial, right? Let's say you've cloned a repository and uh, you make a change, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate doing this. You notice here that uh, I'm using these credentials, right? L Piri as my name and this CS email address. But let's say I'm a different person, right? Um, what I would do is I would say git config in here, and then I would say uh, user.name. I would say, uh, I'll just write my full name here, right? And then I would again do a git config. The email for this repository will be light on the query at user.bedem. Say user.email, right? So that the configuration details in here, once I, Let's say I create a new file. I go to, I go to, let's say Java, or I guess I could go to uh, HTML and I'm working on, uh, on, uh, 
on the footer, for instance, I would create the file footer.html, uh, and then I would, I would come here and say, check the status. I see that uh, there's a file that is not being tracked, the file that I've just added, and then I'll do a git add. If I do a git add, I'll then check the status again using git status. I see that there's a file that is ready to be committed. It's staged. I would say git commit. Then I'll just say added an HTML file or added a new file or something or HTML file. And here I'll just say added uh, footer. Footer.html, right? And then I could save this. So I could save this and quit. And then if I check the status, I'll be able to see that the change, these other changes were done by the person who initially created this repository, this LP, right, with this email address, right? But now I've cloned the repository and I have added a new. Uh, I've, I've, I've added new files and I've committed a change, right? Represented by this commit uh, ID here, this shower and hash, right? Um, once I make the change, right? I could then, I could then issue, sorry about that. I could, I could then issue the git push command, right? Where am I pushing these changes? I'm pushing these changes to GitHub, right? Um, so I'll do this verbosely. And I also check the progress so that you can see what happened. There's just additional flags. Uh, in everything that follows after minus, minus and uh, double minus or hyphen or double hyphen are additional flags for the command, right? So in this case, as I'm pushing, I'll be able to see the verbose output to gain a sense of what is happening behind the scenes. So I'll get like output of what is happening. So it's prompting me for a username. I'll write my username and then I'll specify this token. Um, and then I'll be able to push the changes. So I've pushed the changes, right? Um, I see that I've pushed the changes to the master branch. And if I now go to, if I go to the repository itself, right? If I go here and, uh, and check the ICT3020 repository, what will, what will happen is I'll be able to see the change, right? I'm just gonna go to ICT here. ICT3020, I don't know if my co-op is there, oh, it's here. Um, when, I, when, I, when I go to this app, I'll be able to see the most recent change that has been made, right? Uh, I see that, uh, I see that uh, if you look at these commit messages, I see that uh, there are a total of four commit messages that have been uh, specified by by a number of people here. The reason, by the way, why I'm appearing as the same here, because I'm, I'm, I'm so what Git does is it, um, it's silly really, but it's fine also. It, 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 uh, it, it associates a commit to the person that has pushed the changes. So in as much as, if I check the details of the commit here, I'll be able to see my email address as being uh, light on the period unza.zm or something, um, but, and I guess I can't see this, but, but I, but I, 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 my account is associated with my username because I was using my access token to push these changes. But either way, the key thing here is uh, I've managed to push the changes. If I check the other user, right, which is here, and I check the status of the repository and do a git, git status or a git log, what you'll notice is this is behind, right? The most recent change here was made um, at 16.09, right, by LP. But in this other repository, the most recent change was made by Light on Peary at 16.20, right? So this is behind by, by one commit. To synchronize this repository, this user would have to issue a git pull. I'll, I'll do a git pull. Um, sorry, there's a uh, person who's been. 
Hi, sorry, I'm in class right now. I'll respond to your email, thanks. Right, um, I don't understand why. But that's fine. Uh, so you do a git push, a good git pull, right? And then you specify where you're pulling from. Now, for this particular person, they have to specify the remote name where they the remote name they've defined. So this entity here has defined GitHub as well. But this could as well be uh, anything, right? Any name. In fact, I can change this right now and just do a git remote rename uh, GitHub to um, to let's say uh, remote remote server one or something, right? And then if I do a git remote, I'll be able to see remote server here as the one defined. So when I'm pulling, I would say git pull. I, I, I say remote server, right? And then I just press, in fact, the git pull, I'll, I'll do it verbosely so that you see what is happening. I'll say git pull, uh, remote server. And then I'll have a dash 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 vv, v. I want to see the progress. And then I'll pull the changes. So it will prompt me for my username which I'll enter like that. And then the access token, right? Which hopefully I'll have defined here. And then, oops, sorry about that. I'll just git pull, again, username, password or access token. So I've pulled the changes. Now the reason you're seeing this automatic merge here is because, is because this, this recognizes the fact that uh, there are changes that are coming from elsewhere that have to be merged with what is in here, right? Um, so, I don't know if this has already been done here, but it's already been made anyway, which is, which is fine. So I have an automatic mage here. But anyways, I don't know if this is making sense, right? Push, pull, um, pushing and pulling of changes, right? Uh, you see now that we are almost at the same, um, at, the same uh, at the same level here, right? 1626, 36 second. Um, I think I think this is a bit behind. Let's see here. Get. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to. I shouldn't have done an automatic mesh, but that's fine. Anyway, we'll simulate this again. But anyway, I was just showcasing the. Um, the workflow that you go through, right? Pushing and pulling, which is pretty trivial here. Um, yeah.